Hey everyone, I'm back at one of my favorite places, the salvage yard. Let's take a look around. I went to the salvage yard to get some bits and pieces for the BMW. It had crash damage when I bought it, so some of the underbody parts were damaged or missing. I'm hoping to find the last remaining pieces to complete the front end. But whenever I go to the salvage yard, I'm like a kid in a candy store. I'm always scoping out different engines and transmissions, wondering what crazy combination I can put together next. For example, I saw a couple Honda J-Series V6 engines, and I've seen adapter kits to bolt one up to a BMW transmission. That might be fun. I also saw lots of LS Series V8 engines. Several vendors make kits to swap them into a BMW, and the LS V8 has a huge aftermarket. They also have lots of power potential and are pretty durable. That makes it a great choice for a race car. I'm also intrigued by the GM Vortec 4200 engine. I saw a bunch of these in the yard also, but they all seem to be in the 2000 to 2005 range. As I understand it, the 2006 and newer ones have better cylinder heads and improved camshafts and make more power, so I'll keep looking. I also saw a couple GM 3400 V6 engines. This is one of my favorite engines. And here is the 3500 version. Basically the same engine, just bigger and better. I have to admit, I considered putting one of these in the BMW. I also saw a couple BMW X3s in the yard. I've read that the X3 differential can be swapped into the E46 for better rear end gearing. I might be doing that in the near future. Anyway, let's get back on task. I need to get some front end parts for the BMW. For example, it's missing the trim pieces that fill in the fog light holes. I found some of those. I also found the air ducts for the alternator and the front brakes. And I found an intake snorkel for the engine. Oh, regarding those BMW X3s, one of them had an EGR blank off plate on the engine. I can use that to block off the SAP port on my engine since I deleted it. Thankfully, I was able to find all the parts I needed. So let's go home and get them installed. All this stuff is pretty easy to install. The intake snorkel just uses some plastic rivets. I only had two of them on hand, but that should be good enough. The alternator air duct just slides into place, no fasteners needed. And here's the bottom of the alternator air duct. It attaches to the brake duct. Speaking of brake ducts, let's install those too. They just have two screws on the top, and the bottom clips into the wheel well liner. The trim for the fog light holes just clips into place. I also installed that EGR block off plate in place of the SAP valve. I think it makes the engine bay look a little cleaner. Now I need to address an issue with the steering. The steering is pretty loose and the car likes to wander down the road. It feels pretty sketchy. So I got under the car and checked to see what was loose. If you look closely at this video clip, you can see two things. The steering coupler has some play in it, plus there's some play in the steering rack. So I ordered a steering coupler and decided to adjust the preload on the rack to take out the slack. The preload adjustment is pretty straightforward, but it's in a tight spot. There are some pipes in the way of the adjuster, so they need to be moved. This bracket on the side of the oil pan holds those pipes, so let's remove it. To adjust the preload, we need to loosen the set screw a little bit. We only need to loosen it maybe half a turn or so, just to take the tension off the adjuster. The adjuster is on the top of the rack. I had to push those lines out of the way to get my wrench in there. Now don't go crazy with the adjuster. It should only be tightened enough to take out the slack in the steering rack. If you tighten it too much, the steering rack will start to bind up and it'll be hard to turn the steering wheel. If that happens, just loosen the adjuster a little bit. Ideally, you want the steering wheel to turn freely and also no slack. It might take some trial and error to get there, so be patient with it. Once it's in the right spot, tighten the set screw and you're done. Okay, so I got the slack out of the rack, but that steering coupler needs to be dealt with. I decided to try a urethane steering coupler sold by Ireland Engineering Motorsport. I've never done business with them before. I found them in a Google search. 
So this is kind of an experiment. Anyway, they sell just the disc. So your original steering coupler needs to be disassembled and the disc needs to be installed in it. Removing the steering coupler wasn't too hard, but space is tight in there. There wasn't enough room to get the tools and the camera in there at the same time. So I took a couple photos instead. But there's one bolt on either end of the coupler. They're inverted Torx bolts. You may need to turn the steering wheel a little bit to get access to the bolts. I also had to loosen the steering rack and move it forward a little bit. The rack has two bolts that attach it to the cross member. You'll need to hold the nut on top of the bolt with a wrench. Then you can remove the coupler from the rack. Oh, and here's another look at how loose the steering coupler was. It's pretty bad. Before disassembling the coupler, I put alignment marks on it with a sharpie marker. I want to be sure I put it back together correctly. Disassembly involves removing those big rivets that hold everything together. You can drill or grind the ends off the rivets, just be careful not to damage the aluminum underneath. The method I used was to drill out most of the rivet head, then finish it off with a chisel. But I think an angle grinder might have been faster. Anyway, here's the disassembled steering coupler. Now we need to reassemble it with the urethane disc and the supplied bolts. The coupler has two sets of bolt holes, one for the E46 and one for the E30. The website says it comes with the metal sleeves installed in the E30 holes, but on mine the sleeves were installed in the E46 holes. Also, I learned the hard way that the bolts need to be installed a certain way. The urethane coupler doesn't come with instructions, so I had to figure it out myself. Of course, I got it wrong the first try. But the head of the bolt needs to be on the side that has the slot in it. If you get it backwards, the end of the bolt will protrude too far and prevent the coupler from seating correctly. Last but not least, here's a shot of the coupler installed. I took the car for a test drive and was pretty impressed. There's no slack in the steering, and the steering response is immediate. I like it. That's it for this video. See you next time.